I uh, really respect T- Tucker Carlson. Um, I would say Tucker and I were not friends. I mean, we knew each other, but we weren't friends or anything, uh, you know, five years ago. But I respect him now. I think he is uh, a very brave voice. He had Christy Nome on uh, last night. Was that the thumbs up? She's here. No, you have the audio. She was on with Tucker Carlson last night, and uh, here's what happened. Efforts, and I don't think. Oh, that so you're saying? So hold on, just to be clear. It's I not the bill. That you're saying have to sue that the... many times over and over again. But wait, wait, wait. So you're saying the NCAA threatened you. And you don't think you can win that fight. They said, if you sign this, we won't allow girls in South Dakota to play. And you don't think you can win in court, even though the public overwhelmingly supports you nationally. And so you're caving to the NCAA. I think that's what you're saying. No, that's not right at all, Tucker. In fact, you're wrong completely. Okay. I've been working on this issue for years. In fact, several years ago, I fought I fought USDA to make sure that 4-H rodeo and that the sport of rodeo could keep girls' events, girls' events, and boys' events, boys' events. So I've been working on this for many, many years. And back since November, I've been consulting with legal scholars and professors across the country, asking them, how do I protect women's sports? And they've gone through the steps to how I would legally challenge the NCAA and keep them from bullying the state of South Dakota. And what they've told me to do is that I need to build a coalition. So that's why today I launched DefendTitle9Now.com. And that's going to allow us to build a coalition of states that can fight the NCAA. Okay. Listen, I'm- Here's the thing. <clears throat> uh, and I don't know that this is, well, let me just ask her because she's on with us now. And I, I well, just ask her first. Christy Nome, welcome to the program. Hi, Glenn. Thanks Hi. for having me on. Uh, you're welcome. Um, so I, so can we pick that conversation up where you were last night about coalitions? Sure. Because you're getting a name that, you know, people, it's amazing how, how fast people can turn. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, people are saying on the right that you're caving to this transgender ban. And I can understand because I feel like we don't have many hills left and this one is is popular with 80% of the people. This one is a hill we should die on. Uh, and it looks like you're lowering the flag. So tell me what you're doing with the coalition and why that's important. Well, when have you ever known me to cave, Glenn? I didn't I go through this whole last year um, being the only one to keep my state open in the entire nation and to fight for what was right and have everybody piling on to cave on something like this. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to be smart and solve a problem. And I think a lot of times um, we get bullied. We get bullied by the left, but the right can bully too. And they're not looking at the facts. So in this situation, the coalition that I'm forming is to go after the NCA. They have been bullying states for a long time with their policies by forcing us to allow men to participate in women's sports. Um, I'm a small state, South Dakota small. We had to fight hard to even get any tournaments or games in the state of South Dakota. And I recognize that the NCAA can come in and crush me and can make an example out of me and then point to South Dakota and say, see, no other state better challenge us whatsoever. So that's why I'm trying to be smart about this and build a coalition of athletes, of states, of governors, attorney generals, and show the NCAA that we're going to fight to make sure that only girls can play in girls sports. Now, is so that's the- why the website defend title nine now Dot com is out there, and I'm hoping everybody will go there, look at the information, sign up so that we can send that message. Okay, so is it's not the NCAA that you're uh, worried about alone. It's what these organizations can do with the woke capital and the woke uh, businesses? That's exactly it. That's exactly it. So... Um, We have to stand up and defend um, the right that we have and the the Title IX federal law that's in place that women are women and only women should play in women's sports. And we can do that in a way that picks a fight that says and uh, that that fails, or we can do it in a smart way and build momentum so that we can actually win. Um, I've talked to legal scholars and professors about this issue for months. In fact, Glenn, I've been working on this issue for years. If people would do their homework once and go back and look, years ago, I fought USDA and the federal government when they were trying to force rodeo to let boys into girls events and to make girls participate in boys events. And I fought them alone 
and got South Dakota to be able to still keep boys and girls events separated and USDA, um, you know, turned around, did a 180 on the issue and allowed us to keep boys events, boys events and girls events, girls events. So there's no gray area for me on this. I've proven myself for years on this issue and I'll continue to do that regardless of of who decides that they want to try to attack me and bully me. So, Christy, you know me well enough to know, because you've listened to the show for years, Mm -hmm. you know that if I disagree with you, I would tell you. Um, Yes. uh, And I hope my audience knows this, because the passion is uh, going against you on this right now, and I completely understand that, but I think it's misplaced. Um, You know, I told a story yesterday about Abraham Lincoln. Uh, Before the... um, before they did the second confiscation act, Abraham Lincoln, I have a, a note from him that he wrote to the Speaker of the Senate and said, please don't adjourn. They were supposed to adjourn that night, uh, and they were going to pass the, the, uh, second con- uh, the second confiscation act, which took slaves from the South and freed them. And uh, he wrote and said, don't, don't, don't pass that. Don't. Wait. Wait. I have another idea. And he was, because he was an attorney, he realized this will come back to bite us because once the war is over, we have to return the property to the two people. So we need something else. And that's what led to the Emancipation Proclamation and got rid of the Confiscation Act because it wouldn't hold. And he knew that. And I, right. because I know what we're all up against right now, you're not going to be able to fight this by yourself. And if right. you indeed are putting together a coalition of states and and others, that is critical because, A, we don't want any bad case law uh, stacking up. Exactly right, Glenn. <clears throat> exactly right. And listen, um, you know, this is this is the war that we're in and we have to be smart and strategic so we can win it. We've seen this play out in the pro-life movement for years. Um, everybody believes we we should ban abortion outright, but we know we can't win in court. And if you look at South Dakota, I'm in the Eighth Circuit, um, which every person who's done an analysis on that circuit says, I, South Dakota, I and w- can go ahead and, and look at collegiate sports and we can, we can ban all um, activities for anybody who's male in a female sport, and then NCAA and those organizations will come after me, and then I can sue them. Absolutely, I can do that. But across the board, and I've been talking for months to legal scholars and professors about this across the country, they say, you will likely lose. There's a very, very, very good chance that you will lose this. And then that will make an example out of South Dakota. So build the momentum so that they can't just focus on a little state like South Dakota. Now, the the lies about what's going on in South Dakota right now are rampant across the country. I did not veto a bill. I did not veto the bill that the legislature sent me. What I gave them was a style and form revision that they can accept. And if they accept that, I can protect all students under the age of 18 in our K-12 system and make sure that in the state that we are making sure that only girls play in girls' sports, only boys play in boys' sports. I can fix all of the other um, items that they sent to me in that bill that are a trial lawyer's dream and keep all the litigation out of this so that families don't have to sue 20 times to get fairness and let me do that and then let me build the coalition to win at the collegiate level. And so I did I did not veto a bill. That's a complete lie that's out there. This is a style and form revision, and I'm hopeful my legislature will see that this is the way that we can actually fight the fight and win and at the end of the day have a victory that really does protect women. Is it a fair character, characterization, Governor, that you you basically are sending back, let's just say, three quarters of the bill that you you want to push through, uh, and you're going to want to make yeah. changes to the other quarter? Is that a? I mean, because you're the way I understand your reasoning here is that the everyone who is not in college would be covered by this, right? And you also had an issue with with uh, with performance enhancing drugs, right? That there would be lots of lawsuits uh, that would be associated with this the way that it's written. Can you talk about that for a second? Yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, Everybody that is not in college sports would be protected if they would accept my revisions. And also, they sent me some regulations and reporting requirements that um, don't define what performance-enhancing drugs are. 
And they also allow any student that didn't make a team to go back and to sue that team and that school and that individual student who would use a performance enhancing drug retroactively, but they also don't define it. So then that opens it up to all kinds of opportunities for a student who didn't make a team to go after someone a a year in the past that also allows them to sue for emotional damages, for physical damages, for Um, You know, and it's far reaching. So the litigation aspects of what they sent me just isn't workable as far as what good conservative governing do. And and people tell me, uh, conservatives tell me, Chris, you just signed the bill. Politically, it's, it's easier for you to fix everything. Well, governors don't do that. Governors don't get to make political decisions. We have to govern and we have to take care of our people and be smart about what we're doing and making sure we're not arbitrarily you know, taking a political position and then hurting people in the long run. So this I'm is... doing the right thing here. I know that I am. I'm hopeful that people care enough about the truth in this day and age that they will see it and that we'll have the opportunity to go forward and ensure that at all levels in collegiate sports as well, that only girls play girls sports and that we protect Title IX. It strikes me, uh, Governor, as the, the audience uh, you know, saw you stand up during COVID, and, and I, I would argue a much strong, a tougher place to stand up, uh, where standing right. up for women playing women's sports <laughs> seems relatively obvious. Um, right. so my knowing the audience, as we've seen over the years, they're they're they they can. I think what you're saying is logical to to most people, but they are concerned that what happens over and over again with politicians is they say, "Well, I can't do this right now. I'll do it later." And we'll put together this coalition. We'll yeah. fight, and then they don't see that fight, and they, they'll hold you accountable if you don't if you don't follow so through with this. Can you speak to the people that feel, quite honestly, like I do? Come on, don't surrender. We please. We are in the fight of our life, and we've got to have somebody who's willing to stand. Do you understand that feeling from the people who are upset? And can you speak to that? I can, but I don't know why they're doubting me. The last 12 months, 18 months, hasn't proven myself. And you have to go back three years to see that I've already fought this fight in my state and stood and was the only one. I didn't have any help from my congressional delegation or the state government or any time when I was fighting for 4-H rodeo and for rodeo to remain girls events and boys events. I did that alone with, with that sport in the state of South Dakota. So the fact that people are questioning me is because they haven't done their homework and they don't know me and they haven't watched my career and I can go home, you know, and, uh, and I'm in South Dakota and can be happy and, and do that. But the people who are judging me right now, or the people who are the political ones, and they're, they're not the ones who really care about governing and making sure that we're doing what needs to be done in this country. So what, what it's unfortunate to me is the, Um, lies and deceit that are out there around this issue because there's nobody that's proven themselves more on this particular issue than I have. I've already delivered for them in my state and I will for the country if they will uh, give me the chance to build this coalition and show that we can get it done. Uh, Governor Christy Nome, uh, I honestly didn't know for sure which way I was going to, how this interview was going to end. Um, But I can tell you, I am happy to say, uh, you haven't disappointed me. I think you're doing the exact right thing. And a lot of people don't understand that yet uh, because uh, they're so they're so used to politicians caving. Um, but thank you for that. Also, thank you for the abortion uh, as a dad of a special needs child. I know that you're signing a bill today that has passed the House mm-hmm. and Senate. Uh, it's been in the works for for. Uh, you know, a long time, and weeks ago it, it passed. You're uh, going to sign this today. Uh, that is a good hill yeah. to to not die yeah. on, but to live on. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Glenn. You Appreciate bet. It. Governor Christy Nome uh, from South Dakota.